So welcome to Doc's Office Hours. It's the 7th of December. Let's capture our agenda and then we'll discuss from there what we need to do. So action items. And Jenkins.io pull request. We should probably talk about that. Vlad, anything further we need to discuss about the changes to use the official image? I saw that your poll was accepted for uh, to update to 2.263.1. So that's good work. Anything else on that uh, topic? Well, just I'm thinking about uh, do we need to make such synchronization between installation of Docker and downloads automatic, uh, trying to write some kind of script which will grab the latest LTS version from downloads page and include it in installation or something like similar to this. Good. Yeah, so that's a that, let's, be so let's, let's put it on the agenda. That's a very good one because I can give some guidance there on some things that already exist that you we might be able to leverage to, to make that happen. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mark, can I ask a dumb question? Vlad, close your ears. I ask questions like this and Mark filters them. But um and when you get into pipelines, the agent station the agent um, statement takes Docker and Docker file options are there is there anything there with keeping those up to current or does it not matter is it so generic that we just make sure that the pipeline docs don't ever specify a version or i think i think in the in the case of docker file what it's saying so let's see agent pipeline agent uh docker and updates Docker, Docker file, and more. Let's let's just put that on the agenda, Meg, and we'll okay. talk through it because I think it's a good question and it's worth highlighting something that uh, the platform SIG has been discussion discussion discussing and what how that matters for docs. Okay, because I, I was just starting to look at that and we've all we've sort of slimmed over. We just always use an agent, a label agent and that and sort of slim by slim by quickly all the other stuff. And I think that's a problem. So yeah, let's, so let's discuss it. And that's a really good one. Okay. You see Vlad, how nice he is to me when I come up with these stupid things and he makes me feel good anyhow. So yeah, I noticed uh, that he is always nice. To any isn't he stuff. amazing? When I grow up, we, I want to be just like him, but it's a long people, people, we are being recorded. We don't oh. want to be lying on recorded devices. <laughs> that's really bad. We are not. <laughs> okay. All right. So do we want a topic for what's next? I suspect we could probably benefit from it. Okay. Ah, yes, okay, there's one. It's been a long time since I've, I've last reviewed feedback from users. So let's, how about we do that? Let's take Meg, did you want to report anything further on pipeline docs improvements? No, no, I'm making, I'm not ready to report, but I am seeing a couple of things, so. Okay, great, all right. So then I'm just gonna put what's next and copy a few things in, whoops. Like uh, end of the year and, yeah, end of the year and feedback from users in particular because we've got a docs online meetup on Wednesday. Oops. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. So those are the topics that are on my mind. Any other topics we should add? Just in case if we'll have some time, uh, I'm not sure if you want to discuss one of the latest issue on Jenkins.io which was opened and Oleg 
made a comment on this. It's regarding uh, providing some link from installation page uh, to Jenkins LTS, what LTS is, uh, and maybe there should be a link from glossary. There is like discussion on this uh, in the issue. So it's about the content of the page. Good, yeah, I like that. That's a good one. That's a very good one. Let's let me go grab that issue because I had seen that and seen his comments and was interested in them. So how about Jenkins? Oh, it's GitHub. And we in this one. And then the issue was raised by Josh Soroff. Here we go. Okay, so I'll just link to that. It was thirty-nine ninety-one. Anything else, Vlad? No. Okay. See, and those two action items are actually done, and I've submitted the 2.270 change log just minutes ago. So we're set there. Okay, progress on Jenkins.io pull requests. I am proud to note that we have less than 30 open. Okay, that may be a low bar, but but we've improved. We were previously 32 or 33 and not keeping up. So uh, still more work to do. Um, yeah, Jonathan's for instance, pull requests haven't yet completed processing and Xenop's work on Google season of docs as a, a significant pull request that needs needs some further changes. So keep working it. Now Vlad, I think this is one where we had originally said it we might want to consider granting you merge permission. Are you feeling like you're ready to have merge permission or would you like to give it another month or two before we grant you merge provision on Jenkins.io? Um, I'm not sure what kind of um, obstacles it will involve for me. So I, well, I'm okay with well, like waiting for one or two months. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think the for me that the question is, what's the risk of you merging something prematurely? Uh, and that's not it's not that high of a risk. And having an extra reviewer might be a real a real benefit, but giving you another one or two months might be good as well to assure that everybody's confident that, that you're continuing to contribute, that we can entrust you with permission to merge to the to the doc site like that. early 2021. Is that okay with you, Vlad? Um, yeah. All right, so then Docker changes to use the official image. And I'm gonna go grab a link to your pull request that was just merged today so that we have the example. Here we go. Go ahead and describe what what happened, Vlad. That way, makes aware of it. Um, yeah, so it was a kind of minor thing. Uh, we have a download page in our documentation. Um, if you go to Jenkins.io, there is download page um, available, uh, and it mentions uh, two columns. LTS releases and weekly releases. Um, 
uh, on download page. Yes. And so on the left, gen download Jenkins LTS, it mentions specific version. In this case, it is 2.263.1. And we have now installation, uh, for instance, for Docker uh, on the same side. Uh, mentions specific version uh, uh, later in installing, like in Docker file. It mentions this version 2.261.1. Uh, oh, right now it is already merged. So it is, I guess, right now it is in sync. But before it was mentioning the version which was not in sync with download. And just the proposal was to sync them. Uh, and right now it is done manual. And I'm not sure if it makes sense or if it would be possible to do this in automatic way. So this is this issue is about which Mark agreed to discuss. And, and we can see that there are actually two two version numbers in this page, right? There's the one for Jenkins, and then there's the one for the Blue Ocean plugin release. Jenkins, this one will roll every month. This one will change every month. This one changes sporadically. You know, it may be once a week, it may be once every six months or longer. So right. then, and I think it's a, it's a very good question because the downloads page does perform the update automatically. And so since the downloads page updates automatically, we should be able to update the documentation page, the installing page automatically as well. However, should is a famous last words problem. <laughs> the downloads page, the downloads page page is written in in a Ruby-based uh, templating markup language called HAML, H-A-M-L, uh, a Ruby-based HTML markup. Uh, therefore, it's at page generation time, there is a program clearly running and the thing uses that programming context to go out and query the uh, the update center and ask what's the most recent LTS version. So it it actually programmatically goes out and asks that question. Uh, the installing Jenkins page is ASCII doc and can only do simple and call simple variable substitution. There isn't much substitution. There isn't much programming available to do inside an ADOC file. We could, I guess, write our own extension. Let's see, we could, could write an ADOC extension. We've got one of those already. We could set a variable in a doc somewhere and read it into the uh, installing Jenkins page. That might be another concept. Um, I, I'm not sure if a doc can use values of environment variables, but those are the kinds of options we have. Oh, we could, there's another one. We could rewrite the page, rewrite the page in Hamlet. But then, then it becomes challenging to maintain because it would be the one page written in Hamel when all the rest are ASCII doc. So Vlad, if you're if this is a, a if you're interested in the doc generation system, 
then this is a great project. We could also consider offering this as a, maybe it may not be big enough for a Google Summer of Code project because it's probably, I would guess not more than a week or two of work. And they really would like Google Summer of Code to be eight or 10 weeks of work. Mm -hmm. um, crazy idea, and I need to look at this more to see if I really wanna argue for this. But it seems to me tough that we've got two separate pages that are telling people how to do the same thing. That maybe the documentation at the download should say, go to this page and follow the instructions to download. And maybe well, we're but, completely out of it. Well, so the, for me, the, the two contexts are so different that I think they, they would have to remain, remain separate. But let's, let's try your idea. So let's, let's okay. talk through it. So this is the download page. And what it, its goal is to help people find the package that's right for their environment. That may be a simple war file, a Docker image, one of three or four or five different operating system images. So this one for me is, is intentionally broad and it's covering both LTS and weekly. Oh, and the other one we're looking at is just a baby steps, right? It, this one much. is is micro precise detailed steps and intentionally detailed. You need to do this in order to specifically use Docker to run, in this case, Blue Ocean. Okay. It's going to get you Docker and Jenkins and Blue Ocean all installed. Right, so it's, an, it's not really a general purpose installation, it's a specific. Right, one. right, this Got is it. very specific Whereas this one is is maximally general. Right. This is the one that adults should use once they know what they're doing. The other one is for getting started. Yeah, that's another way to say it. And, and yeah, that's <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This this is the this is the you can always make this go. This one is is hey, this will get you a much, much further. And it really is amazing how much further this gets you, thanks to Vlad's brilliant work with this particular step right here. Right. And this thing. Those these these steps here have just worked wonders for the simplicity of this of this documentation. Thank you right. again, Vlad. No. Uh, I uh, well I. Uh, personally, I can describe how I was doing before uh, uh, before providing this PR. I was mainly looking for specific two dot uh, two six three dot one uh, different releases, and I wanted to find release which contains LTS inside it, besides the version number, and also we uh, used Slim edition before. Uh, due to the like lower um, uh, size of the image, uh, and so I was able to find it. I'm not sure if we'll be able to find it in future releases and how uh, automatic are those uh, like things created on the Docker Hub because those are located on the site which is not controlled by Jenkins. And also, I manually looked at the plugins.jenkins.io and found that the latest Blue Ocean release is exactly 1.24.3, so it hadn't changed. That is why I included it here. So it, it may involve like several, well, uh, uh, exp explorations, I guess, and before automating this, um, but uh, I'm not sure if we want to do this in automatic way right now or just wait uh, and see how we want to do this. But I uh, think that in case if we we'll do this just for Docker in Hamel installation and the rest will be in ADOC, it will be kind of inconsistency for the entire installation page. and. Just wanted to ask community if we would like to do this, like create this inconsistency, so uh, it will force all other sections to either uh, switch to new format or somehow 
address this question. So this yeah. may be another issue. Which... I think you're right. Because this, this is not for, I'm in charge of this facility where I'm going to have a thousand Jenkins instances and I need to know how to install. This is how I can get, I'm new to Jenkins and I want something I can experiment with. And this gets me through, right? Right, so if, right. That's So if they end up getting a back revved download, I'm not sure I even care that much. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah. The, exactly. the, the, the risk is quite low. If this one is out of date, the risk is is very low. It's it's inconvenient. It's a little awkward for us. And this one is maintained update automatically. So right. so the the high risk one is automatically updated. This one certainly it's not a it's not a huge risk. Right. And now we and the risk does not have very serious consequences. I think. Right. Correct. Because. Hey, the, the previous version would still work. Right. The version that was here before Vlad's most recent pull request was a functional, usable, working version. It just happened to be one LTS out of date. Mm -hmm. Right. So and I agree with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Vlad. Oh, just I, I agree with with Mac that well, in case if we don't have this in sync, it is very low risk, which will probably yeah. not affect a lot of complaints. I think. Um, just my yeah uh, my view. Yeah. Good. Okay. Good. So yeah. so it's fine that we do this interactively. We'll we know we'll see. We'll have to make this that change in mid-January when the 2.263.2 release comes out, mid-February and mid-March, so once a month, we're going to see it. Um, I had one other alternative that came to mind. Um, I think it might be even worse than any of the, well, let me put it up above here. Uh, we could write a test that complains when the page is wrong and include the test in page generation. Ah. But thinking about it, that's not a lot different. That's still code. That's not a lot different than writing an ASCII doc extension or setting a variable. I mean, in either case, all this one does is tell us we have a problem, whereas these actually fix the problem. They, they automatically res resolve it. So I'm not sure that's, yeah, actually I'm gonna delete it because it yeah. just having thought through it, it doesn't make sense to just test for it. If we can test for it and we have enough code to test for it, we can we can figure out how to write the rest of the code to replace it, mm -hmm. to, to write yeah. the correct value. The, the one concern I have is, okay, so there's three of us sitting here who now understand the situation. Let's say there's two of you because I'm kind. I partially understand it. What happens if we all go on to other fields? Is this documented? Any this you know, the people who come behind us? How are they going to understand what this? Just this is right now. It's manual. You could do something else. We didn't think it was worth it. Yeah, do we have a I place think... for that sort of stuff, or basically, if this group ever goes on to other I... fields, is everything hosed? We certainly could document it somewhere, but for me. The reality is, even if we don't document it, it will sit there. It'll sit there. And it's it, not the end. It'll of the continue world. working. So, and I, I don't know where we would put that documentation that a new person would be more likely to to detect it than they would be to detect it right here in the in line. Right. If if anything, and I'm not. This may be a bad idea. We could put a README file in the source directory of this file that explains it. So if somebody finds it and they say, were these people total idiots that they left this, you know, or something to say, this is a manual thing and we considered these other ways of doing it and decided it wasn't worth it or something. I don't know. Well, and, and certainly even one step further, there is the ability to put comments in ASCII doc. Oh yeah, that might even be better. Right, And we could embed a comment in this ASCII doc page saying, this is currently maintained by humans who update the version when a new release arrives. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, that's at least a, an explicit statement 
yes, this is not automatic. Right. And glad do I remember correctly, it's two places. Right, right now it is in two places, both in installation and in tutorials. I guess it is tutorials, I'm not sure exactly how it is called. Yeah, it is. I'm that I'm confident of. It appears in here. Let's just duplicate this. We'll put a tutorials because it's right here, for example. There it is. Mm -hmm. This is unfortunately the best link I have is that one. Yeah, right now it is in all tutorials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that one's only one sample. It, it goes into three or four of them, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for now, for now the decision is, continue interactive edits, edits until we have time to automate. Mm -hmm. Time and will to automate. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, uh, just just minor issue since you touched mark the uh, possibility of testing uh, should we test uh, when we'll update the tutorial the tutorials or installation documentation with new version latest version uh, and uh, should we test it in an automatic way or like manual as before we did would be enough uh, I do need to provide some automatic testing. I'm not sure if we have this done before. But... Uh, we don't, but that certainly is a, there's a famous project, the Python project, uh, PyDoc style automated test might be interesting. Uh, what they do is they have in their source code, there are times when the the developers will write a comment. They write the comment in a very specific way and the comment can then be extracted and converted into an executable automated test. Mm -hmm. So the, they, they actually make executable documentation. Oh and, and we could consider something like that. In this case, this would be the only occurrence and I'm not yet personally persuaded that the Python mm -hmm. experiment in that actually has worked successfully. I know they do it. I just don't know if their developers actually consider it valuable. Right, and I just sort of for bringing this item, I thought maybe this like it has some more simpler solution. But yeah, uh, you, you're right. It's a little bit yeah. too complex right now to address. Good. A uh, very good question. Very very good. Anything else on Docker changes to use the official image? Not for me. Okay, Meg, nice you had work. asked about pipe. Oh, go ahead, Meg. What? No, I just said nice work. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, Meg, you had asked about pipeline agent updates. So, so tell some of the story here. So, the the platform sig has realized we have more Docker images than people to support them. For example, we have Debian 10, 9, Debian 10. We have CentOS 7.
have alpine 3.12, and that's just for Jenkins 4. Now, Meg, your question wasn't about Jenkins 4, it was about, what about the agents? Right. So then we have the inbound agent, and they have, I believe it's Debian 9, Debian 10, and I believe they also have Alpine 3.12. Then we have the SSH agents, which we might call the outbound agents, or, yeah. And there, I believe it's also Debian 9 and Debian 10, and Alpine 3.12. And I think we've got at least one other variant, other agent variants, like WebSocket, Etc. And it okay. looks, yeah, how do you know that? I mean, if they're, for somebody else, how would they find out if you just said, you know, what are the variants? You just oh, know. oh, that's, that's a good it, question. It's not documented someplace, it's just something. No, no, it, it, it actually is documented. And what I've described is a flawed and imperfect description because we should go to the authoritative documentation like this one right here, Jenkins slash Jenkins. And if we look at the tags here, this lists the tags and so lets people decode which things are supported and which are not. Just and I'm sitting here looking at the pipeline reference. They may have actually, I think there's a bigger issue, but we may be able to say. They've actually, it looks like what you do there is you put the images you want into your my registry. And then they are just referencing what's in my registry. Right. So at the point that I'm doing my pipeline, I don't have to actually deal with this. So it becomes an administrative task of mm -hmm. setting up that registry to have the agents that are needed for my pipeline developers. Correct. And that's yeah. probably a really important topic. And it's a big, ugly one. And I think I've got uglier things or other things first to deal with. So I may just want to forget about that. Yeah. It, it, it... It is a different topic, and it certainly is interestingly comp complex dealing with, let's see if we can find inbound. Here we go, Jenkins slash inbound dash agent. And if we look at its tags, yeah, actually this is a good, a good one already. Nice view of it. And so just to prove the point here, here's latest, latest JDK 11 and Alpine, I completely missed in my list that these exist in variations of JDK 8 and JDK 11. And you can imagine the combinatorial explosion yes. problem we have here. Yep. And the fact that each of these images may need security <laughs> updates when the operating system vendor needs to make a change. And yep. so lots of things like that. What I, what I suspect is that our users are grossly underusing the, the flexibility of the agents. I suspect that people are doing sort of simple agents that work for them and they're missing out on a lot of benefits, but they're working. Yep. And that. all of this other stuff could get very, very complicated. Mm -hmm. And they can always read the source code. It may be for a very small group of sophisticates that get into it anyhow, so. Okay, shutting up now. I wanted to go back and take a look at, at the other one because there should be, yeah, here it is, SSH agent. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I think that is the, the other one. This is the, the inbound or the outbound agent. Yep. So now given all those variants, so that, that was the, the scare, scare people into realizing that there's an awful lot of variation and not an awful lot of people maintaining it. 
So okay. right now, what the proposal is that the platform SIG uh, will be reviewing a Jenkins enhancement proposal to reduce the uh, supported uh, Docker images and to create a process so that we know who is maintaining those Docker images by image tag. In other words, I can say I'm going to maintain Debian 10 is maintained by person A. CentOS 8 is maintained by B. And it may be that Alpine is unmaintained. It is up for adoption. Using the, the adopt a plugin concept that already exists in Jenkins. So those are the kinds of the Do kinds of ideas. You want to mark that? Is it the, that that's not fact? That that's just like a possibility? Right. That's the, these are. Or is that yeah. actually is that fact? No, these are just examples. Yeah. Okay, and none of these Docker images are going to contain Maven or Gradle or anything like that, right? That'll be separate. That's correct. They, they usually do not, they don't contain specific tools because the user needs to decide which tool they want. Okay. And so if they want tools embedded inside their agent, then they need to create their own Docker image derived from these. So it's really just a matrix of operating system release and JDK version. Correct. That's right. Yeah, okay, cool. So Meg, does that answer your question on pipeline agent updates? Yes, yes. Okay. And, I, and I think the pipeline documentation is, it works. There's other there's subjects that aren't touched, but we don't have, it doesn't need to be updated. They're not referencing specific versions. Great. So good, okay. Very good, all right. So then next topic was issue 3991. LTS description on Jenkins location on Jenkins.io. So I like this one because it's about how do we do a better job of structuring the docs. So what happened was Josh Sora, the author who originally created the tables divs transition said, hey, I was looking for the definition of LTS and saw there's this page and there's this page and neither of them tell me what the meaning of this word, that three letter ah. acronym is. <laughs> and he's right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, there is no hint. What is what does LTS mean in this case? If you have to ask. Right. So then he checked um, this page and it doesn't talk about LTS. Mm. And then he checked this page, the glossary. And the glossary doesn't mention LTS. So we've got this acronym that we all know what it means, and yet nowhere do we, nowhere on in the pages he searched, do we actually define it. Right. Now we do have a place that, that does define it. And if we go to the downloads page, this learn more takes me to a very nice page that describes the LTS and its process in detail. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's, you have to know that you better click here to find it. Do we have the ability to have um, like the, the LTS when it's in a title or whatever to have that be a link to this page? Sure, sure. That's, that's I think a very reasonable thing we could we could certainly make, I think anyway, we could make this because this page is a, uh, what do you call it? This page is, I believe, Hamel and generated. And so we could change this quite easily to be a hyperlink or have the LTS be a hyperlink. Yeah. Or that sometimes there's funny things about what you can do in a title. If not, mm -hmm. you can add a sentence afterwards that says this is a change log. For this is the automatically right. generated, you know, and make LTS a link there. 
Well, yeah, we could make it a, a link here or we could make it a link here. Mm -hmm. You know, there are lots of, I, I think it's a good insight that, hey, we probably don't have enough places that guide users to understand what is what is the meaning of LPS for Jenkins. I think actually Tammy is starting an initiative for our internal docs to use a lot more. I mean, this is a big bad one, but all over we use, we throw out these terms that people don't necessarily know what they mean. And they could all just be links to, you know, I don't know if everything links back to the glossary and then the glossary has all the links of where to go for more information or if we all, you know, implementation details, but we should have a lot more, you know, terminology links throughout everything. Right. Yeah. Build, what's a project? I just saw the definition of build is related to project. Well, that helps me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And a project doesn't tell me that that could be defined by a pipeline or a freestyle job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, this glossary is like, like too many other glossaries. It's like too vague to be useful, really. Good. Yeah, okay. But I guess part of the same issue is like uh, the question, do we want to link installation page, uh, change the content to installation page and provide link somewhere to LTS. This is something which is addressed in the comment to this issue, 3991. And it, uh, that makes sense, I think as well, that Link to the to the definition of LPS. Absolutely, I think that would make sense. Mm -hmm. My experience is once you have this in your mind, every page you read, you're going to see ten things that should be linked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so are we envisioning then steps we could take? Be things like add LTS to the glossary. Seems easy. And link to the full from the glossary to the full description. Because the glossary seems to be sort of less than a pair, a paragraph or less of description of each term. And right. the, the LTS. The LTS docs description is where? Ah, here we go, is here. Is paragraphs and paragraphs of description. Right. And we certainly don't want that in the glossary, but a link to this would be very nice. Right. So then would we also propose link from at least the body text that says Jenkins LTS to the full description, or should it link to the to the glossary and then they have to jump one more time? Right. You didn't answer my question. Which one do you think it should be, full description or glossary? From a structural standpoint, I would say glossary. From a usability, don't why do I have to do that extra click to get nothing in the middle? Yeah, okay, you're, you, you, you voiced what for me. Okay, Vlad, your opinion? Because I, I bias towards link for the full description. What do you think, Vlad? Um, I think, yeah, full description will be fine. Mm -hmm. If they, I mean, I think the glossary as it is, is kind of useless actually. And, yes. and I think most glossaries in the industry are, I've gotten so, you know, I'm sort of opposed to glossaries because I don't see anybody who does them right. So. Okay, yeah, so yeah. link from the body text, that seems pretty obvious. We can consider a link from the heading, LTS, to the full description so that they know they can, they can click that and learn what is the meaning of the word LTS. Right. Now, if we start doing this on more stuff, like if I mention a project, there I might like a lot of different links, and that might be something that could be put into a glossary if we made the glossary usable. But 
here's how you set up a project with freestyle. Here's how you do it with declarative pipeline. Here's how you do it with scripted pipeline. Here's how you debug. Here's how you fix performance problems in your project. You know, there's a zillion links and, and I, I like, I would like a, a document that had all those relevant links. That would be nice. Um, And there's a whole bunch of so in, like that. So then it would have inside, instead of, I think, Meg, what you're saying is instead of glossary saying here that a project is just a user defined description of work, it would also have several additional sentences said, saying the pro some of the project types include freestyle. Pi or pipeline, freestyle, matrix, um, yeah, that kind of thing. Is job in the in the glossary? It is, and job is a deprecated term synonymous with project. Project, okay, good. And build, what do they say for build? Uh, build, build, build just as, goes to result as a single execution. A single execution of a project. Actually, I think I'm sometimes saying that you can use a pipeline to define your build. I yeah, which, check my use of the terminology. Right, which which is then you would say you define your project. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and that's my sense of this particular glossary is it's mostly used to resolve those types of legal disputes. Uh -huh, yeah. Which word am I allowed to use, Your Honor? Mm -hmm. And Her Honor says, you are allowed to use this. Yeah. Oh, this is a nasty little rat hole. We could go down. We probably want to resist that. But. <laughs> right. Exactly. You, know what, you know what the thing is, though? Now that we've discussed it, we're not going to be able to forget. Every time I look at a page, I'm going to go, gee, I wish that was a link, and that was a link, and that was a link. Well, but, but for me, I think that thought process is valuable because there are times when pages become so overwhelmed with links that I find them more difficult to read. Right. So, so there's some, at least from my reading, there's some balance. I don't know what the balance is, but there's some balance between enough links and overuse of links. Right, because at the other end too, um, I have seen some pages that in lack of links start explaining every term in right. gross detail. And if I know what those terms mean, it's hard for me to read the page and find out what I'm trying to learn on the page because all the other stuff is there. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why I, in a, in a previous life, I did, I called it an encyclopedia, but it was basically a Wikipedia sort of thing that, and that was all my links went there and each article there then had links and links and links to everything you might possibly want. And that kept it fairly clean actually, because I, I can read over a link if, if I'm reading a sentence and it makes perfectly good sense without clicking the link, then I just ignore that the link is there. So. Right. Good. Yep. And talking about LTS, I can mention that, uh, well, reference mark your latest presentation on video where you described uh, difference between LTS and weekly releases. Uh, and well, clarifying how often those are made. Oh, and, yeah. Um, it was that was good. Page. Yeah, it was last week. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. So that was Darren, Darren, and Mark. Yeah. That and that was that's a good. That's at least a good source to see if one did I say something false, and two if if somebody would prefer to have a video instead of a instead of reading the the, the rigorous definition, they we could link to the video if we wanted. Right. Yeah. And now, some people just want to vaguely know what LTS is. And it's like, okay, I should never put anything but LTS in my production environment. I'm done. And other, how are these people determining what's an LTS and what does it mean? And, you know, some people yeah. need or care more. Yeah. And I'm not sure if it is possible to provide this, like, cut from the entire video, which lasts, I guess, one hour or more, just this 30 seconds part where. Mark is explaining what LTS means and how often it is produced. Oh, you know, that's, that's, oh, yeah. yeah, we we haven't used clips like that before, but adding a video clip extracted from the pod. 
yeah, I, I've done I've done those kind of clips before where I've cropped something, you know, trimmed it back to exactly the segment that I want. Yeah, mm. that would yeah. be great. I I I, I don't know. There there are people who there there are specific voices in the community that very much prefer written written over anything else, and other things are just a distraction. So I. It, it might generate some pushback from some of my colleagues. So I don't think I want you putting video there. But there's an answer. <laughs> but you bring you pull out the phrase learning styles, mm, and different people right. have different learning styles. Yeah, and I I admit that I enjoy a good video, but I have a hard time learning from a video. I'm a words person, but but I've also worked with some brilliant people who would do great reviews of the documentation if I would come to their office and read it to them. They could mm -hmm. not read it. It wasn't that they were functionally illiterate. They just do not take information from the written page. And if I came in and read it to them, they would give me fabulous reviews. So, and everything in between. Um, right. right. And there are also people who are only going to learn if they can tinker. And there we get into, you know, having little training videos with a little lab that they can do, go to and say, if you need to do this, do this, this, this you know. Um, and we're not quite there where we can offer that yet, but we may be close. Right. For training purposes, I guess video would be great uh, source and resource, but in case it will just reach uh, uh, internalization, for instance, it would be hard, I guess, to yeah. internalize video. Although the biggest text. problem is that video is harder, to, is more work to update. Like this one is going to stay solid. Right. But for instance, if we did a, I mean, something that would be nice would be to have a video that goes along with your tutorial on Dick and Jane install Jenkins. But mm. you, do you want to have to recut that every month? It's one thing to go in and change one string. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So you get into the maintenance and, and when, <clears throat> and there's, and there's some ways where you can cut it where it's immune to it, where you sort of say whatever your release is and blur it out or something. But there's others where you can't get away from it. So I think it's always going to have to be a mix and a priority. Mm -hmm. Right. But and I'm having a hard time because I, as far as I'm concerned, if it's in word, if it's written down, it's good. And but the world is not that way, and the world is getting less that way, actually. So. Mm. All right. Anything else on that topic, LTS, and what we do with it? I. I think we've, we've got some rough ideas. These are things that we could do that would be reasonable. Mm -hmm. that are Anything quick, else there? Yeah. No, I think that's good. That's good. Okay. Need to get you prepared for the season of docs meeting. Meetup. And we reviewed that today with Zina. Uh, Vlad was there as well. Thanks for joining us, Vlad. Thanks very much. No problem. And um, Vlad, I saw that you had also um, asked to view the the seed questions document. You're welcome to put questions in there. Uh, Zinab will review them tomorrow. I'm sure some of them she will say, she will decide, I don't want to even be asked this question. Or if it's asked, I want it answered by Marky or by Kristen, not by me. And and that will that will all be fine. Mm -hmm. I just uh, put together a couple of questions, but yeah, in case if uh she'll have some time or she'll have time to readdress those yeah that would be fine whatever it is like uh, uh something what what is next and are we planning to do this kind of stuff related to documentation and um yeah component that she addresses and kutukoda and training and yeah all this thing. Okay, last topic was this review feedback from users. And I propose given the time we're at that we just ignore that one for now. It needs much more time. It's this worksheet that's automatically generated from user feedback. And we occasionally get it, get feedback on it. It's becoming less often. So today we had some feedback, yesterday we had some, and three days ago. So we are still getting a little bit of feedback from this. I wonder why it's slowing. Is it because people are finding out that it doesn't 
happen that nothing happens quickly or no no it's because there there is a better way to do it now Uh uh-huh so if i'm on let's say i'm on on the installing jenkins page i'm in the docker page when i jump to the bottom of this page there's the was was this page helpful right that enters data into the sheet but right below it is improve this page Uh which will let me edit directly and report a problem which takes me right to a GitHub issue. Right. And so we've, we've given them in a very short space, three different ways that they could share something with us. Aha, uh-huh. okay. So thankfully, this one, this one is actually the most difficult to manage. It's still mm-hmm. relatively simple, but these are, the, are much better when they're available on a particular page. Right. I mean, for instance, when I click report a problem here, it has filled in the page that had that I was Mm -hmm. looking at and the source file of the page that I was looking at. So so the report a problem is much, much better for the the first time submitter because when they submit something into this page, all we get is what page they were on, not where the source code is, uh, is for it and their their hint of was right. it helpful or not. Oh, this is nice. Cancel that. All right. Any other topics we should review few before we close today? Not for me, thank you. All right. Recording will be available in probably an hour or so. Thanks both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Next week.